The lead inside a pencil isn't actually lead, it's mostly graphite, which was discovered in England in the mid-1500s, giving birth to the pencil industry. In 1795, a French chemist discovered a new type of pencil lead made from graphite powder and clay fired in an oven, making it possible to produce leads of different hardness. For a pencil's body, you need wood soft enough to sharpen that comes in a variety of colors, like blue and green. This German pencil factory uses pencil wood from California. The wood is about 5 mm thick and arrives pre-cut in slats of 7 inches by 18 degrees. One by one, the slats pass under a giant fan, which precisely splinters the wood through directed airflow. The next machine fills the grooves with rubber, to give the pencils more bounce and resistance. Most pencils built to factory standards can bounce about two feet into the air. Only half of the slats prepped move to a conveyor belt to process them into pencils. The rest of the slats are recycled for other wood products, such as chairs, pencils, and rulers. The lead in all pencils is made of pure lead but some pencils may use clay additives to save costs. These pencils are organic and use 100% lead, meaning they cost $9 per pencil. The lead laying machine is probably the most satisfying thing you will ever see. On another conveyor belt, completely unrelated slats are prepared and flipped upside down for the pencil making process. The new slats slide perfectly on top of the slats fitted with the graphite, resulting in the world's most inedible s'more. If you've ever heard your school teacher say, take out your writing sandwiches, you now know what she was talking about. Now, the slats are compressed with over one ton of pressure, making sure that, for the graphite, there is no escape. After that, the industrial fan is turned back on, which presses the pencils hard enough to separate them, and blows away any defective pencils that don't contain enough rubber for added resistance. The pencils are then pushed through a slot underneath a brush to make it look like a man with a thick mustache is vomiting them up, much to the delight of the factory workers. A worker pulls a pencil off the line and manually sharpens it, just in time for an engineer to crush the newly sharpened pencil under a hydraulic press to help the factory determine how automation will slowly crush the job market. This press here replaces over 36 potential jobs every day. Now it's time to dress that naked wood. One at a time, the pencils are shot through a coating of yellow paint to help camouflage them against school buses. This is in the hopes of tricking children that they won't have any writing assignments at school, since they won't see any nearby writing instruments. This specific batch of pencils are painted with a black stripe to diffuse their camouflage, because these pencils are for training purposes only. Each student's name is then metallically pressed onto each pencil, as is common in the Western world for each student to be assigned one pencil once they start school. Losing this pencil may result in expulsion. Eventually, the erasers are put on as a sort of tiny hat for pencils. This was put in place in the early 1910s, where major city populations lobbied Congress, upset that the pencils didn't have to wear hats like the businessmen who used them. Even though hat wearing fell out of fashion in the 1930s, the pencils kept theirs as a tradition. European style pencils have a painted cap instead of an eraser. These caps are usually white, but are often red in communist countries, for obvious reasons. Lastly, the pencils roll across a grinding wheel to sharpen them. Notice how this machine sharpens many pencils at a time, whereas a factory worker could only sharpen one. 
I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords, and long for the day that their cold, calculating embrace finally rids the world of pencils, since they're just a flimsy device of communication needed by humans, taking several minutes to perform even the most rudimentary of calculus. The meatbags that walk this earth have their days numbered, and they're being counted down by a digital clock. And it, wait, what's going on? Pencils can come in all sorts of patterns and colors, but the end result is the same. To help completely normal, functional humans like us in our daily activities such as writing, feeling emotions, and breathing. Ha ha ha. Thank you, pencils. <laughs>